just to be in the house of the Lord once again. Amen. Amen. Oh, yeah. Amen. How many of you woke up this morning? Would your mind stay on Jesus? You see, when you wake up with Jesus on your mind, everything else will just pass away. I like it when the old folks say that. I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. Because when your mind is stayed on Jesus, no matter what's happening around you, in your heart, keeps in your mind. It's all right with me. I know it's all right with you. So if you don't mind, let me sing the song this morning. I woke up this morning with my mind saying, oh, Shake off whatever is hindering you from praising the Lord today because we all know this. 
Sunday. Say, turn to your neighbor and say, I'm so glad you were in the house this morning. <laughs> turn to another neighbor and say, God is smiling on you this morning.
just thank you for saying a word this morning, Lord God. We thank you for your people, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, because this is the day that you have made. And we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Father, our prayers that you touch our hearts, Lord God. Touch our hearts, Lord God, to thirst after our holiness. To be hungry for your holiness, Lord God. We thank you right now for your people and what you're doing in your people, Lord God. We thank you that the Holy Spirit will be saturated in this place this morning, Lord God. That your people will stay focused on you and not the problem or the situation. But stay focused on what you're doing in their lives, Lord God. We thank you for answered prayer, Lord God. We thank you right now for those who are not feeling well, that you will heal their body from the crown of their heads to the soles of their feet, Lord God. For those who have petitioned before you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that miracles are on the way, Lord God. We thank you for your signs and your wonders, Lord God. We thank you that no matter that is working in the world today, Lord God, we know, Lord God, that you have all the answers, Lord God. We thank you right now, Lord God, even for our youth this morning, Lord God. Father God, let your Holy Spirit reign in our lives as well, Lord God. Let your people of God cry out to you, Lord God.
kill them on the spot. He said, go and show yourself to the priest. And the Bible said, as they turned and was going to the priest, they was instantly healed. Now, it was ten of them. But one turned back and came gave some gratitude. Sometimes it's good for God to bless us and give us things. But how much gratitude do we show God? Last week, last time we heard that the man said he washes, he wash on Mondays. Meaning he washes his mind, he, he watches what he say, he watches what he's doing. And you know, positionally, we in good standing with God. But it's our condition. Well, I hear Paul say, sometimes the flesh takes an occasion over me. In other words, I yield to the flesh and to the spiritual man. And that's why I say God is just good to us. Hey. The old folks said it best. You gave me, God give. No matter how hard you try, the more you give to Him, the more He'll give to you. God is good at it. Back with the prayer for the mission offer, we're going to ask Reverend Griffin to lead us to the throne of grace. Father, we just thank you for a portion of what we have received. And we just thank you for being just who you are. And we ask your blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Before he comes, there was a song I remember as a young lad. Walk with me, Lord. How many of you want the Lord to walk with you? We need God to walk with us. And the old folks say it like this. Walk with me, Lord. Help me. Walk with me. Come on, y'all.
friend we have in Jesus. He's a mighty good friend. He woke me up this morning. Started me on my way. All night long he just watched over me. But then he guides me every day. You can just take him at his word. Because God is good. He's a good God. I don't know about you, but it's, it's something about the power of Jesus Christ. He woke up on Easter morning and declared all power in the heaven and earth was in his hand. He's a good God. Every time he comes to church, you ought to get excited because of what he has already done. Yeah. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Yeah. At this time, we're preparing our hearts for prayer. He said, where there are two or three who will gather in my name, that I am in this. You know, I believe that. If you believe that, you can come to the altar right now or you can stand where you are. We have several requests. Thomas Walker was shot in the leg last night for the brother of Willie Walker. Her asked for Ruthie Holloway, the Holloway family, the Williams family, the Price family, the Bobar family, the Hamilton family, the Riley family, the Johnson family. Sharon Newman and son PLC Joseph Newman, who's in South Korea. You know, a lot of things are just happening in the world, but greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. God is able to do all things well. And I don't know about you, but I believe in the power of prayer. As we bow our heads in prayer. Thank you, God, again for waking us up this morning in our right minds, Lord, and starting us on our way, Lord. Thank you for your goodness, Lord. Thank you for your mercy, God. Thank you for your love right now, Lord. Thank you for your forgiveness, Father. Thank you for your grace and your mercy, Lord. Thank you, God, for just being good to all of us, Lord. If it had not been for the Lord on our side, tell me right now, where will we be? Thank you, Jesus, for helping us, Father, to be what you want us to be today right now, Lord. And, Lord, there are so many requests right now that have been made, Lord. You know, Father, what they have need of, Father, before they even ask. You said, where there are two or three who are in my name, that you're in the midst right now. Now be in the midst of us right now, Lord. Let your anointing come down and fall on us, Lord. Send your power down from heaven right now, Lord. Lord, put power in the voices of those who sing songs of Zion right now, Lord. We ask you right now to touch all those that are in the hospital right now. Touch the better on the sick bed right now, Lord. We ask you to bless this church right now, St. Mark Missionary Baptist Church. We ask you to bless the Chief Shepherd right now, Pastor Alan G. Madison II. Bless his wife, Florence Lord, and his daughter, Carissa, son Jerome right now, Father, their families right now, Lord. Bless all the ministers right here of St. Mark Baptist Church, Lord. And then, Lord, we ask you right now to bless all the deacons, Lord. Bless all the trustees right now, Lord Jesus. We thank you, God, for this church right now, Lord. Thank you for the saints of God, Lord, who, who pray to you right now, Lord. Thank you, God, for asking our prayer, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for your mercy right now, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Just right now, Lord. 
Lord Jesus. There's some things that's happening right now that believe us right now. We need you right now, Lord. Lord, we trust you, Father, that you would do what you what we ask of you right now, Lord. Father, there are so many prayers, Father, that'll be going up to you right now, Lord. And we ask the best this world and especially the United States, Lord. Especially Trump, Father, and all the cities he's making, Father, and taking us into war, Lord. But we know, God, that you're able to do all things well. And we're trusting you, Lord. We have trust in you, Lord. The almighty, powerful God. Thank you, Jesus. And then, Lord, we ask, Father, right now, Lord, that you would just keep us in your hands, Lord. We trust you right now in the name of Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of the Father, Lord, full of grace and truth right now. Thank you for the anointing of the Holy Ghost right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your power in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Just stay there for a second. Just stay right there for a second. Just, I, I know it's not protocol, but just stay there for a second. What a friend. Can, can you just play and say, let everything in that prayer pray. On the Lord, you know, the voices. Let everything give God praise. Play that just for a second for me.
15th annual Women's Conference will be held April 28th and 29th at the Renaissance Hotel in Richardson, 900 East Lookout Drive in St. Richardson, Texas. The theme is, for a third Trinity, there is strength. And the script, scripture is Philippians 4, 6 through 7. Please see conference information in the lobbies of the Education Center or Sanctuary. Our contact convention president, Sister Linda Turner. And I have a couple of cards. Thank you. Thank you for your words of sympathy, your words of concern, your gesture of caring, and the love you offer. And this is from the Randy family. Amen. And thank you. Your kindness is truly appreciated. Thank you. Your proud and thoughtfulness. And this is from Sister Dale Powell. Went off. So I just think if you may don't like to came to there for a while and he said you that. Thank you. 
And it's uh, again April the 23rd of the 17th. We want to invite you here to celebrate and praise God with us. Now, not now, we come with our recognition and awards. Thank you very much. Good morning. Good morning. This living legend recognition and honor is presented to Sister Betty Three. and her husband have been members of the St. Mark family for 14 years. Deaconess Threets is active as a Sunday school teacher. She is the president of the Announcers and Greeters Ministry. She is vice president of the Oasis Ministry, and she is a devoted member of the leadership team. She faithfully serves as a member of the church anniversary committee. She performs the secretarial duties for the Deaconess Ministry. She also serves as the energetic and responsible church clerk for St. Mark. Yeah. Deaconess Betty Threes has a Bachelor of Art, Arts degree in Business Management Communication and a post baccalaureate certification in Special Education. She has been retired since 2012 from teaching in Special Education, which she taught for over 20 years. She's also currently a discussion leader at the Sheila Bailey Ministry Inc. Bible Study Fellowship Institution. Deaconess Betty Threes is a child of God, and her favorite scriptures are Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through him who gives me strength. And 1 Corinthians 10.13, no temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you he will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear, but when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. We now salute you, Sister Deacon S. Betty Turn around. 
And she just told me I didn't say all that. I'm so proud of her. I'm like, oh, that's a mouthful. Okay. She's a graduate of a prestigious Dallas Independent School District, Brian Adams High School, where the mascot is represented is represented as the mighty cougar. Well, she earned an associate degree from the distinguished El Central College. She has earned an associate degree in information technology from the Computer Learning Center. She is currently taking an online course in pursuit of her bachelor's degree. Deaconess Range is a conscientious facilitator at the Sheila Bailey Ministers Inc. Bible Study Fellowship Institution. Deaconess Range currently serves as the corresponding secretary of the Metropolitan Baptist Ministers Wives and Widows Union. Deaconess Lana Range has been a member of St. Mark Missionary Baptist Church for 26 years. She is currently serving as the Deaconess Chair. Sister Range faithfully helps out with the youth department, and she is a member of the Women's Course, as well as a member of the Women's Mission. Additionally, Deaconess Sister Range is a member of a pastoral care team, and she is the fifth child of 13 siblings. She has been married to the love of her life for 26 years to her husband, this handsome, debonair husband, none other than Reverend Nim Range. And now, Sister Range, please come forward. Because he keeps 
secrets. <laughs> it was hard getting the bit of information that I got from Brother Turner, but he got us. Okay? So I am privileged to be able to honor this lady right now. Okay? Sister Deaconess Linda Linnell Turner was born and raised in Dallas, Texas, where she united to a Baptist church at an early age. I just received word that that Baptist church is Bear Street yeah. Baptist Church. Yeah. <laughs> um, she went to a public school in Dallas, Texas. So what public school was that? <laughs> Dunbar. <laughs> <laughs> this is from Mother Turner. She went to a public school in Dallas, Texas. Okay, Sister Turner attended the very well-known Bishop College. Don't really know what the degree was in, but I'm assuming that she, she, she made it. She made it, okay. <laughs> she is happily retired from AT&T. She's married to Deacon Jean Turner, and they have four daughters, 11 grandchildren, and 16 great-grandchildren. <laughs> she currently is a deaconess at St. Mark Missionary Baptist Church and she also works with the Oasis Ministry. Deaconess Linda Turner is very active in organizational church structure. Um, I cannot begin to list all the things that she's involved in on the state and national level. Uh, not that I got a lot from you, but. <laughs> <laughs> but I will say that uh, she was the past first vice president of the Texas State Missionary Baptist Convention Women's Auxiliary, and she currently serves as the president of uh, the Texas State Missionary Baptist Convention Women's Auxiliary. Uh, I've been blessed to have Sister uh, Linda as one of my mentors. I, I have a couple, Sister Sheila, where'd she go? Sister Sheila, Sister Lana, love you, and Sister Linda. And those of you who don't know that much about Sister Linda, because she's kind of quiet, sits to the side, she sits in there wonderful. She is such an inspiration, such an inspiration. She's one of those folks that she doesn't just tell you what you're doing wrong, which I appreciate. She pulls you to the side and she says, look, this is not right. This is, you know, biblically speaking, and, and more importantly, this is how it should be. Let me help you. Let me help you get this. She has greatly encouraged me to be involved, not on just in the local level, but on the district level, the state level, and I'm thinking the way she's talking, national level. <laughs> we'll see, pray for me. <laughs> but she greatly encourages you. And what I mean by that is that uh, when you tell her your plans, she makes you accountable for them. She makes you stick to them. She brings your words back to you and she says, remember you said that you wanted to do more with your church. You said that you wanted to be a better servant for the Lord. You said, so I'm going to help you be that person that you can be. And I cannot stress how important it is for people like Sister Linda to not just say what we're doing wrong, but to show us and guide us. And that is what she's done for me and I am forever, forever grateful. So, um, she greatly encourages you to keep your word. So therefore, without further ado, and I'd like us all to stand now. Thank you. As we salute you, Sister Deaconess Linda Linnell Turner. Thank 
and uh, we just we're going to pass out some temporary uh, uh, memberships. They're honorary and temporary memberships, and that's for today only. But you're always welcome to come back and be permanent, a permanent member here at St. Mark, the great St. Mark. Thank the Lord. We welcome and we are pleased that you're here. We ask you please to come back again. Thank you, sister.
our young people as well as parents and grandparents and to talk to the church about the God-given responsibility that we have to bring up our children in the way of God's commandments. We live in a world today that is far removed from our yesterdays. And what I mean by that, uh, those of us who are of age really cannot relate so much to what the change in the culture of today really is. For uh, we live in an age of cyber technology, global communications. We live in a world that all you have to do is to touch a button and whatever you want will just come before you. And our young people are savvy smart in that. And a lot of us of yesterday don't really know how to use the availability of technology that is before us today. And uh, sad to say, I just learned how to text <laughs> seven, eight months ago. And, 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 and our children, three and four years old, can text and communicate on the computers more than those of us of yesterday can do today. And we also have to understand the changing in times for which we live in. What our responsibility really is in making sure that our children have a firm foundation in the Word of God simply because the world is not concerned about the things of God. But the world is concerned about the things of the world. Yeah, right. And if our children do not know the difference between the word of God and the things of the world, yeah. our children are facing and will be facing right. a difficult time when they leave from under the tutelage and the care and the protection of their parents. That's right. And we have to ask ourselves a question how will we prepare our children in order to meet the world that is so strange today compared to our yesterdays? Will they have the resources spiritually, not so much physically and financially, materially, will they have the spiritual resources and, and the foundation of God's word yeah. in order to be able to evaluate that which is the glory of God and that which is displeasing to God. Right. Have we ourselves prepared our children to go into the world once they leave home? You see, at home, they're under our protection. They're under our discipline. They're under our training. They are under our care. But when they leave home, are they equipped to meet the demands of a workplace and the demands of God's work? What does your child know about Jesus Christ? Now, I will admit they've heard a lot about him, but what do they know? about who he really is in their life. Can your child right now tell you who Jesus is? And can they, when they tell you he is the Son of God, can they tell you why he went to Calvary? Can they tell you 
when he went to Calvary, what did he die for? What did he suffer for? And then why did he rise again? What did he prove by dying and what did he prove by rising? When God made the home, God made the home as a type and a shadow of what the kingdom of God is really about. Our homes represent on earth the kingdom of God. And if our children do not know what the kingdom of God is about, how can they reflect the true righteousness of the Christ we talk about in the home and that we reinforce in the church? If they don't know that the home is representative of the kingdom of God, how can they live in the kingdom of darkness when they don't know the kingdom of light? So the question is, are we setting our kids up to fail Come on now. in relationship to godly principles, godlikeness? Yeah. Are we doing that? Young people right now, if you were in a situation, who would you turn to? You've already left home, you're in college, or you left home, you're in the military, you've left home, you're on your own, you're driving your own car, you, 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 you got your own, as we used to say back in the day, your own pad. You get your own, they don't call them apartments anymore, they call them townhomes. You got your own townhome, you got a good job, you make a good check. But what happens? When calamity comes, what happens when a serious situation comes? Who do you know to call upon? Are you calling your mama or your daddy? Or do you have a connectional source through a relationship with Jesus Christ? Can you get on your knees and earnestly talk to God? Does our children know how to talk? Do they know who he is in their lives? Do they really earnestly believe what they've heard in this church and in your home? And if your home represents a type of the kingdom of God, is God's will being done in your house? So I just thought I would raise those questions in order to get into conversation with you today to make you think about what is at stake rather than to feel good about what I'm talking about. Come on, man. First of all, <coughs> do you really know if your child is saved? Come on, now. You should know because you're the first teacher that God has given the whole church. You are the first person who ought to know God and the reality of what God is about in your life. And the Bible has taught us to train up our what? Train up our children. Don't just let them come. You see, these reality shows and all of these programs on TV are doing more training and raising in the negative way than we are in the positive way. And many of us don't know what our children are listening to or what they're viewing on TV. On, and some of this stuff ought never enter their home. Yeah. And you can't tell me, oh, I don't have anything to do with it. Yes, you do. You are accountable to God for what you allow your children to be brought up with. And you are responsible to God what they are being indoctrinated with. Does not the Bible say that sin enters in by what? What are the three ways that sin affects us? The lust of the eyes? You see, what you see can make a great impact yeah. on what you think. That's right. You see, what you see can give you a perception that may not be. 
Because Satan knows how to present to you a lot of things that seems good, that looks good, that, that might be inviting to you, but it could be to your detriment. So how do they combat against that? What they hear, what they see, and the desires of the flesh. That's right. It's what our children today is being affected with. So how do we protect our children from being, as Sister Walker said, played by the devil? How, how do we do that? First of all, we've got to teach them the word of God. There you go. Because the Bible says the word of God is a lamp in the what? Pathway. A light. You see, in this life, when they go through the different stages, the word of God becomes their focal point. And when the word of God becomes their focal point, the Holy Spirit that resides in them, you see, that's why they got to know who God is. That's why they have got to have this new birth yeah. that the Bible talks about. The new birth. They know that they've been born by a parent, uh -huh. a father and a mother. They know physically they came from their mother. Yeah. They know physically they have life. Yeah. But when it comes to the spiritual Come on, birth, oh, they've yeah. got to know that they have been born again. Yeah. Not of the will of the flesh, yeah. but of the will of the spirit. Yeah. And they cannot be born with the will of the spirit if they don't know and have not been taught the word of God. That's right. It is your responsibility, That's right. parents and grandparents, yeah. and the church's reinforcement yeah. on your teaching, your training, to help them to be strengthened yeah. in knowledge and in the grace of God yeah. so that when testing times come, yeah. they can stand the test. Yeah. today is because Satan has a game just for your child. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. And Satan is going to use someone that's close to them or someone who's attracted to them in order to get them to do what God will be displeased with. And we have not given them the armor of God in order to understand 
the wiles, the tricks, and the schemes yeah. of those that do not know God right. who are in the kingdom of darkness. Yeah. And if your child yeah. is in the kingdom of God, yeah. which represents light, yeah. don't you know whatever comes their way, the light, which means the knowledge in their mind, the belief and the faith of God's word will light up the phoniness, the crookedness, the evil and the wickedness of whoever brings it. It will protect them from being a part of the schemes of Satan. That's right. That's right. Now that's not to say that they're not going to make a mistake. But when they make a mistake, they won't cover it up. They will be what? Sorrowful. Because they have failed you and God. But because you love them so, you will caution them. You will teach them greater. You'll have a greater hold on them. So that they know inside themselves, even though I have failed or displeased my parents, of God. They love me so much until they're willing to give me another chance and to reinforce what I've done. So, turn your Bibles over to 1 John. Chapter 5. First John chapter 5, I just want to look at verse 13. Parents, grandparents, church, you have a great responsibility in this. This is your duty and your responsibility to make sure that your children know the Lord. And look what John says. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life. We need to be sure that our children know the Christ that we talk about, we preach about, yeah. we sing about. When I was a child, I did not have any choice. Yeah. In knowing God. That was a must in the Madison home. We were going to know God willingly or far. You know what I'm talking We were going to know God. Sundays, we were never asked, do you want to go to church? That was understood. And if we said we had a stomach ache, we would either have some black straw or some casserole. But you're going to church. You're going to church. That was no, no option in the Madison home. And you're going to go to Sunday school. It was no sleeping late. We'll go to church. No, you're going to Sunday school. Because you see, in the church as well as in the public system, education is taking place. And if you miss Sunday school and Bible study, you miss your lesson. If you are not at school, somebody's going to write a note. That your child didn't come to school, you're gonna get a call. Yeah. Or you're gonna get a summons yeah. by the constable to go to the court to yeah. see why your child missed school. That's gonna cost you five hundred yeah. In the Madison home, when you sat down to the table, you didn't start eating. You gave God glory. You start praying over your food. Thank you, Lord, for the food we're about to receive. You see, what you're telling God, we're glorifying you for the food that you have provided. Yes, mother worked on a job for $37 a week. Pay 
paid rent and clothed the children. Had a car fare seven cents. Some of y'all don't remember that. But she did it out of love and she did it out of the gratitude of the Lord. She loved her children. She made sure that her children knew where her help came from. It came from the Lord. Even though she worked for the job, it wasn't the job, it was God who provided her strength to work and to receive the benefits and reward. Father, so when we sit down to eat, you don't eat without giving God. We thank you for this food, which we're about to receive for the nourishing of our hearts. Jesus name. Amen. Some of us said prayers about Jesus. Well, Mama would say, why did he weep, boy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then she'd tell you, when Lazarus died, yeah, yeah. Mary and Martha uh -huh. had a problem because Jesus didn't come right away. Yeah. And when he came to see them and they heard the words, if you had been here, uh -huh. our brother would not have died. And he says, I am the resurrection. I am the life. Oh, we know, Lord, in the last day. That's going to happen. He said, no, 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 no. Son, why did he weep? She said, he will not for that. But he will. Because they didn't believe. Amen. See, when you say a Bible word, you got to know why yeah. you're saying what you're saying. Yeah. And you just can't repeat what you heard other folks say. Yeah. 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 And so what she was saying, son, you need to say your thanks to God. Thank you for the food we're about to receive. Yes, sir. You're glorifying God because he gave mama <coughs> health and strength. Yes. You're glorifying God because mama brought in what it took to put food on the table. That's why you're thanking God for what you're doing. And then we had another thing. You didn't go to bed without saying a thing. You didn't go to bed. Because you said one thing. The night she was teaching us, young folks, the night was uncertain. You could lay down tonight and not wake up in the morning. And so she taught us, now lay it down. She was saying, Lord, in your gentleness, in your kindness, lay me down to sleep so that I be no what? No worry on the mind. I can sleep in peace. Now lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. I'm in your care, Lord. I know you are. I rest in your faith and my belief that you're God who loves me so that you're going to take care of me through the night. Now lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. And then you came back and said, with some certainty and some assurance, but if I die before I wait, I did let us get away without understanding who God was. She never let us Forget that she had a responsibility and a duty to teach us who God is and what God is about. And when she was doing that, when we got up in the morning, yes, you didn't get up until you got on your knees again. But thank you for allowing your angels so watch over me all that. When you went to bed, when 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 sleep on your mind, understand God got you in His arms. When you wake up in the morning, thank God that He had angels all night, watching over you. Then when you.
you got it. Uh -huh. It's a new day. Yeah. And what she was saying is wash the night off of you. Go clean up. Woo. All right. Why we gotta clean up, mama? You don't come to the table. <laughs> With dirty hands. Mama was teaching us that God wanted purity, truth, and righteousness. Then when you got ready to leave the home, you didn't say bye, mama, you come here. You hug mama. You kiss mama. In other words, show me some respect. Yeah. 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 Know who I am yeah. to you yeah. and who you are to me. Yeah. You're my child. Yeah. You know what mama began to teach us? Now I need to teach you about another father. Yeah. Oh, right. Clay Madison was my dad. He was my earthly father. Yeah. But you need to know who your heavenly father is. Yeah. Then she began to teach us. Uh -huh. All I'm trying to do, and all I'm trying to say today, our children need us. They need to know what we know about God. They need to know who it is that holds them in the palm of his hand. They need to know who is leading and guiding them through life. They need to know in case I need to talk to an earthly father. And he's not there. I've got a heavenly father. And so, and so, when we read All right. this book, uh -huh. he says, if you love me, uh -huh. keep my heart. Do your children know God's commandments? You see, what you have to understand, when you teach God's word, in his word is found his will. God will never contradict his word for his will. And he'll never contradict his will for his will. Whatever we do in life has to be according to the will of God. Amen. And whatever is not according to the will of God is unacceptable Amen. and unpleasing right. to him. So how does your child know how to be pleasing and acceptable to God? The first thing you've got to do is to teach those children. This house represents the kingdom of God. This house represents the will of God. This house is praise and worship unto our God. So when you leave this house, and go into the streets. The streets is not God's will, not His purpose. So how do they do not conflict against the world? Well, God's will. Well, let's see. Let's see. The Bible says we're to teach them how to come from among the world. Pastor, what do you mean by that? You see, we live in the world uh -huh. as Christians, uh -huh. as subjects of yeah. the kingdom of God. Yeah. We live in the world, but we're not going to be a part of the world. Yeah. What do you mean, Pastor? Whatever the fashion, come on now, the ways of the world, yeah. Yeah. that's in opposition to God. Yeah. So yeah. our children should never want to be influenced yeah. by that which is not in the world. And that's the kingdom of God. Whenever you put more emphasis on things, more than you do on God, they'll forget the blessing and start wanting the things. And never give thanks. So, real quickly, and I'm going to say that. Is that the level? <laughs> I've been up there long. It's always late. Come on, preach. 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 Now, some of our young people are off to college, right? 
I forgot a lot of them in college. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. Then we've got a lot of young people who leave home, All right. which is yeah. the mark of that season. Is that right? right. Yeah. And then they go into the world. All right. So what if they can't get you? Say it. In times of a situation of concern. Yeah. Right. What if they get on their phones and they can't reach you? And they can't reach anybody else? Who's left for them to call? Yeah. Oh, yeah. There you go. <laughs> so if they don't know how to call him, who are they at the mercy of? Someone who's going to take advantage. Over in Matthew chapter 6, Jesus said, <coughs> Verse 8, I believe it is, verse 8, Matthew 6. He says this. Parents. Now this is an answer to two words. Right. So don't say pastors got the wrong script. <laughs> he says, parents, if you have really taught your children the proper manner and attitude of who I am. When times of uncertainty come, they will not be shaken. Satan might shoot a fear of fiery darts at them, but if they truly know who I am, if they truly been trained in the way, they will not depart from the foundation structure that you have taught them out of my word. And before my word changes, uh, heaven and earth yeah. will pass through. Right. So your children ought to have the assurance. Mm -hmm. They ought to have the confidence. They ought to be bold enough in the midst of that uncertainty that when they call on God, yeah. he'll hear them. Well, and this is what he says in verse 8. Before you even ask, before you even pray, before the situation ever comes up, before the concern ever enters their mind, your heavenly Father already knows what you have need of. So if I have a Father who knows what I have need of, should not I govern myself according to His will so that whatever Talk to God. Somebody. Uh, 
Christ, has got to talk for you. Because when times of uncertain come, you got you may be rattled, you might be shaken, but you better make sure that your anchor holds and grip. So when you get ready to pray, regardless of what it is, Romans 8, turn over there, Romans 8 and 26, real quick. Why your kid needs to have a relationship and a fellowship with God through Jesus Christ. Romans 8, 26 says, for we know. You see, there are times that we don't know what to pray for. But because we're saved, because we're sealed with the Holy Spirit, because we're in the family of God, because Jesus is our Lord and our Savior, Jesus sits at the right hand. And when your prayer starts coming up, he acts as your advocate. He, you become the client. He becomes the lawyer. He pleads your case. And then the Holy Ghost who's in you, he becomes your intercessor. He becomes your advocate. He says that the Holy Spirit intercedes on our behalf. Your child needs to know. And the Holy Spirit, you be talking. Lips be moving. Yeah. But the Holy Spirit just steps in and he takes yeah. over. Yeah. He prays right. to Jesus. That's right. And Jesus hears the prayer. Yeah. Jesus says, that's, that's a child in the family. Yeah. Uh -huh. He reaches over to the Lord and says, Dad, I told him that to ask anything in my name, you will do it. You see, that's how your child can make it in this life. That's right. I think I've told you once before. You see, I got a I've got a visa in my pocket. Go ahead, man. Go ahead, You see, I didn't get that visa if I was out of the wheel of the credit card. You see, I had to qualify in order to get a visa. You follow me? They checked my references bit of, of because of my social security. Enough. They checked the reference. And they found out that I was in good standing. You see, that's what happens with the Holy Ghost. And that's what happens with Jesus. When I received Jesus by faith, I was placed in the family of God. And because I'm in the family of God, I'm in good standing. And because the Holy Ghost intercedes on my behalf, God approves me because of his son, Jesus. So the bank issued me a credit card based upon my standing, based upon my references of character in what I will do based upon my past. Watch it now. They sent me a card with my name on it. Then they gave me a number. But one thing you've got to pay attention to, they send it a visa with the name Bank of America. My name was on it. Watch this. It wasn't my card. It was in my possession. My card belonged to the bank. The bank says Bank of America. Bank of America said to anybody I walked up to, give it to them. We'll back it up. That's what I'm talking about.
with Jesus. Yeah. You don't have to worry That's right. about how you're going to make it. That's right. And if you do make a mistake, and we do make mistakes, don't we? That's right. That's right. That's right. But when you make a mistake, uh, look what the Bible said. Uh, if we confess it, hey, yes. the law is yeah. faith. Uh, He's just. Yeah. And he'll forgive you of your sin. That's Watch right. this. And he'll cleanse you. What does that mean? He'll examine your mind so yeah. that you can know yeah. and think about what you did do yeah. so that you won't do it no more. That's right. Confessing means that I'm admitting I did it. Yeah. Yeah. And at the same time, I'm going to turn away from it. Yeah. And I'm not going back to it. Yeah. The Holy yeah. Spirit in you helps you to say no because he restrains you from participating yeah. in what your mind keeps on thinking. Yeah. 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 All right. Oh. Yeah. Well, then what happens? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You'll start letting your light shine. Yeah. And then others around you will be influenced by your witness and your testimony by how you live. And that's what the scripture means when it says, holler, be like me. How do we holler God's name? We let the Christ in us come out of us. That's right. Rather than the world going into us to bring out what we are not. Hallowed be thy name. I'm going to give him respect. Yeah. How do I give respect? How I live. Yeah. Yeah. How I talk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The friends I run around yeah. with. Yeah. I'm not going to let that contaminate my witness and my yeah. testimony. Yeah. I'm going to give God the glory. Yeah. I'm going to respect God as my father. Yeah. And because he is my father, I'm going to please him yeah. how I walk, talk, and act with my behavior, yeah. lifestyle, everything yeah. before me. I'm glorifying God because I'm his child. I'm giving him respect because he's my father. Well, hallelujah. Yeah. And he said, let yeah. thou be yeah. the
the same way we came in. But let us leave knowing that we've been in your presence and we've heard from you. Strengthen our young people today, Lord. Strengthen the parents that they might know their responsibility and duty in bringing up these children in the right way. So that when they get older, Lord, they won't depart from truth. And they'll stand for you in the midst of whatever circumstance that denies them so that they can glorify you that you in turn will glorify them. In the name of the Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. Now just for a quiet moment now. Just for a quiet moment. Young people, regardless of the whole you are, and to our senior young people who may not know the Lord in the part of that sins. You cannot be pleasing and acceptable to God if you have not received His Son, Jesus Christ. But Pastor, how do we do that? The Bible teaches us for God so loved humanity. Humanity was in sin. How was it in sin? By one man's sin. Adam did not obey God. Well, what does that have to do with us, Pastor? It said because of one man's sin, Adam didn't obey God. He did not keep his word. And he sinned. How did he sin? God told him what not to do. And the devil persuaded them what to do. And when they obeyed the voice of Satan rather than the voice of God, God was displeased with that. And what God did is he put them out of the garden of Eden. And because of one man's sin, sin entered into the world. So how did it enter into the world? When Adam and Eve had children, they took on the same image and likeness, the personality and the character of their parents, which was sinful, fallen nature. And because of one man's sin, sin entered into the world. Which means that all have sinned by the way of Adam. And since all had sinned by the way of Adam, God decided that he would give man another chance. So what did he do? He took his only begotten son and sent him in the likeness of sinful man. So that when Christ came to teach and to preach the true way to God and to repent on man's behalf, he didn't do nothing. But he became our perpetuation. What does that mean? He became our substitute. We were guilty. He was not guilty. And he came to teach us the love of God. He came to show us that he was the one who came to pay the price. What price did he pay? It says, for the wages of sin is death. And since all of us was born, in Adam, we all came under the sentence of death by one man's deed. 
And when Jesus came to show us another way, it was Jesus who went to the cross of Calvary and paid the penalty, the price for sin. And God said that I love you so much that I gave my only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him, what should we believe? We believe that he paid the price for sin, a price he did not owe for a debt that he did not owe, but a debt we could not pay. And since God would not accept a sin offering, he gave his son as an offering for sin. And then he said, whosoever believeth in him shall never perish. What does that mean? It means that the sentence of death has been lifted from you when you received Jesus Christ. And because you received him, you became a child of God. And he that is born of God, says John, 1 John, he that is born of God has eternal life. That's how God fixed it for us. Now, young people, if you don't know, and some of you senior children, if you don't know for sure that you have the right standing before God, you can get it right right now. Because Paul tells us in Romans 5, he says, therefore, having been justified. What does that mean? Jesus settled the debt. He paid the debt, which satisfied the sin debt of us. Therefore, having been justified by our faith. What? Our faith in Jesus for what he's done. And our faith in God because he loved us and did something about it. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God. And when we accept Jesus Christ, we're not at odds with God anymore. We have peace with God through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And the next verse says, Therefore we have access to God. And if you want to be in a relationship and fellowship with God, now the privilege is being extended to you so that you'll know that everything is all right. Young folk, if you have not made that decision, if you don't know for sure, why don't you come down now and to parents and grandparents. If you don't know that you're truly saved, why don't you come down? Would you do that? Who will be the first to come? The Spirit has spoken to you. Today. Now that the word is not there, don't, don't give it up. Come on. I'll come to us. One, two, three. Praise the Lord. Somebody else ought to come. You know who you are. You know who you are.
Lord is speaking right now in your hearing. Don't pretend everything is all right with you because you already know what's in yourself. And don't listen to that voice that says you're okay. You need to know for sure that you're wrong. And if you think you have time, you don't know. Don't play Russian roulette with your soul. Don't be embarrassed because you come down. Heaven awaits you. And somebody said, well, it's nothing but a lot of hypocrites in the church. But you know, I'd rather be in church with a few hypocrites than be in hell with all of them. Come on to Christ. Won't you come?
want to say this has really been a home for me. My, my, my home church has been in North Carolina, Queensville, North Carolina. But I want to join the day of the watch game because this has just been <laughs> And I think the music department really enjoying the time. And you know how you just feel just so full? Yeah. I feel like I have so much more to offer. Yeah. And I want to just give everything that I have. Yeah. I want to be on Wednesday nights. You know, and, uh, a, a job that we on Monday through Saturday, 12 hours a day. So the schedule is just a little difficult. But when it changes, I'll definitely be on Wednesday nights. But I really want to be a part of this great ministry. I thank God for a great pastor. My father told me before he went to heaven, he said, son, if you ever want the blessings to stay on your life, he said, always be a blessing to your pastor. So I'm still the pastor in North Carolina, who's my brother that took over the church from my daddy when I went to heaven. But uh, my, my local pastor is here, and I thank God for Pastor Madison. I love her dearly. I love her beautiful wife. They're just they're just wonderful people. I love Brother yeah. Down, this great music department. It's just a blessing. Y'all yeah. really don't know this love thing is contagious. <laughs> <laughs> so I love all of y'all. God bless you. We, we know about it. <laughs> God is good, isn't he? Amen. Uh, we want to honor the request that we made today. And lift up Brother Rodney. Amen. Thank you for Brother Dawson as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And for the level of commitment that he has uh, spoken about this morning. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we come now and we thank you for the word. Thank you for the ministry of your Holy Spirit that has moved upon the hearts of those who've come. Lord, we want to pray for Sister Janice Henry. And we thank you for the ministry that she has in the life of the youth that she encounters on a day-to-day -day basis. And Lord, we just pray that you continue to give her the grace that she needs to continue to minister to our young people, to let them know that yes, we do care, and there are those who love them. And we pray for the young people that she has oversight, asking that you would in some way, somehow, let them know that you love them as well. And Father, we thank you for Brother Rodney Aaron, who has come today and he has rededicated, if you will, recommitted himself, uh, not necessarily to this church, but to you. We pray, Lord, that you would just continue to keep him on the, the straight and narrow. Ask him, Lord, that you would Give him the strength that he needs in spite of the challenges that he may face. Thank you for his wife who has been a great support. Ask him that you would continue to minister to her as well. Father, for Brother Dawson, we want to thank you for sending him this way. And we ask, Lord, that you would help him too to be able to experience your love, your grace, your mercy here at this church. And that the union would be one that would be to your glory. And Lord, we just thank you for hearing this prayer. And we thank you most importantly for answering. And it's in Jesus' name. Amen. Go ahead, peace, buddy.
Thank you. 